A table saw rip fence jig that you may want to build for your workshop. This multi-purpose auxiliary fence is based on the design by Bob Van Dyke as appears in Fine Woodworking Magazine number 231. This table saw jig consists of a base unit that straddles your fence. You then attach a various number of accessory fences to your base unit such as sacrificial fences and tall fences to help secure your tenon cutting. The tall melamine fence uh, can be useful in cutting panels for cabinet doors. Here I'm demonstrating using the jig to cut tenons. This is a fun and rewarding build. Hola woodworkers, Paul Carlson here, a small workshop guy. I recently got an email from Fine Woodworking Magazine with a link to a build of an accessory jig for a table saw rip fence. Coincidentally, I had just recently watched a William Ng build of a similar jig, and I decided that adding this to my workshop would be a good idea. Trying to cut tenons on a long workpiece without a tall fence is a very bad idea. I highly recommend that you watch Bob Van Dyke's video as well, and I'll have a link to that in my description down below. I have made very minimal changes to his design. Depending on the size of your table saw uh, fence, you're going to need uh, maybe about 24 inches of Baltic birch or Russian birch or probably regular plywood would work. Three quarter inch plywood would be recommended for stability. I had first cut the plywood to be equal to the length of my fence and then I cut a six inch wide strip and then a six and a half inch wide strip. Uh, then for the straddle piece, uh, which is going to be double layered, I measured the size of my fence and then I wanted to add a little extra, maybe one sixteenth, so that it would be wider than my fence and also I needed to add a little extra like a half an inch on each side to go into dados on the upright pieces. While I was cutting uh, I decided to go ahead and cut some extra sacrificial fences uh, as well and made those the same size as the front which is six inch, six and a half inches. Then I grabbed some melamine and cut an eight and a half inch uh, for my uh, tall fence and here you can see the base unit that I've cut and these tall fence and the sacrificial fences that I've cut. And then I like to label things so I don't get them all confused later. Here I'm going to glue up the two straddle pieces that go between the front and back. And so uh, nothing magical about that. The following day when the glue had dried I checked to make sure that I had cut it somewhat wider than my fence so that I had uh, some material to go into the dados on the front and back. The best way to make sure that all of your attachment holes align properly is to drill them all at once so uh, that's what I'm doing. Glue in some T-nuts into the back side of your front base. Make sure those are flush with the front by embedding them a little bit with a Forstner bit. Use a Forstner bit on the front of your tall fence as well. Came back the next day, decided that my apron was pretty well filled up with sawdust and stuff, so I emptied everything out, dumped it out. Don't know any other way to do that. And then here I am putting everything away. <clears throat> I do carry quite a bit in my apron for convenience purposes. Next, it's off to cutting the uh, dados for the front and back of the uprights. And so what I did first was some test cuts to get my height right. And then I did the real cuts with multiple passes. And then I'm using my router plane to clean up the bottom of those dados. You want to sneak up on your perfect cut. Here you can see I haven't done enough yet. So I take some more off and then finally I get a, a very nice uh, fit of that cross piece into my front fence. Now with my uh, front fence and my cross piece uh, being done, I set those up on the fence so that I can uh, set it up at make sure it's square at 90 degrees and then put my back 
fence up against it and again holding it making sure that it's exactly square at 90 degrees then I uh, mark where the top of my data will go on the back fence. Most content creators won't admit something like this, but this is actually my second attempt at a complete build of this jig. The first one went into the trash pile because for whatever reason, I couldn't get it to be precisely square or 90 degrees. Being satisfied with my uh, dados and their sizes and everything, I went ahead and uh, glued up my uh, base unit and so again checking everything as often as I can to make sure it's 90 degrees so I can make any adjustments before the glue sets then clean up a little bit of the glue <coughs> get the uh, back side uh, attached and uh, you'll notice in the back side there's a couple of uh, holes those are going to be where some clamps uh, are used to attach the fence or securely to the uh, table saw fence. Again, paranoid over uh, 90 degrees, so check, check, check. All right, next comes putting a strip on the top of the eight and a half inch melamine uh, that's gonna be used for uh, sliding along an additional little jig to push tenons uh, over the saw blade. So uh, roughed up the melamine a little bit with sandpaper and then uh, drilled and uh, screwed on uh, that walnut piece and then threw some wax on there so that the jig uh, would slide nicely. Turns out that when I attached the clamps to the uh, back fence, uh, I had just a little bit of uh, the, the uh, screws sticking out. So I ground those off uh, with a couple different methods. All right, checking for squareness again. Uh, everything seems to be really good this time. So uh, now we're gonna do some uh, test fitting. So here I'm test fitting the uh, tall fence with the sliding uh, bar on it. And uh, let me admit another mistake. The hex bolts that I bought were actually a quarter of an inch too long and when I would put them in the bottom two attachment holes that would cause a problem, push the bottom of my fence out and so it seemed like it was no longer 90 degrees. Took me a while to figure that out. In fact, it took me a long time and it drove me nuts. Next, you need to adjust the toggle clamps so that they have a longer stem. Uh, so I just bought some cane uh, rubber items and then super glued those in. And here you can see I'm saving on the glue and the spray by not opening the caps, but that's just for demonstration purposes. Uh, then attach those and make sure that they would go through and reach the fence. And uh, that's one of the nice features of this jig is that it attaches securely to the fence by the use of these toggle clamp. My next step was to test my sacrificial fences and make sure all they hold the line and that those went on properly and that were exactly at 90 degrees. Um, next comes the push device. Maybe you want to pause the video and take a close look at that. It's really just the use of some tongue and groove uh, units and the idea is to get it against that fence and to slide over that railing so uh, again go back and pause the video and take a look at that design and then i attach a clamp to the toggle clamp to the front of that and again checking for my uh, 90 degrees because i think at this point i'm all done i cannot provide you with the plans for this because they belong to fine woodworking magazine and uh, bob van dyke but go to uh, Fine Woodworking Online uh, Edition, uh, magazine number 231. Download the article into a PDF and the plans are part of that article. I probably don't need these uh, quick release clamps on my push piece here, but I find that they uh, stabilize everything. So I'm going to tend to use those in addition to my uh, toggle clamp. So this really, really works well to hold large pieces upright and to keep them secure and keep your fingers out of the way and uh, make sure things move uh, smoothly across the blade. 
And then if you want to do rabbits in a piece, uh, you can use the sacrificial fences along with your dado stack and uh, not tear up your real fence. I actually just leave the tall fence attached to this and then through a hole that I uh, did with my drill press, I hang it up on my wall out of the way. Be sure to uh, check out the link I have down below in my description to Bob Van Dyke's build. He, he's got a lot of really good explanations about this project. If you like this build, give me a thumbs up and a comment. You can even leave a negative comment, no problem. I'll just delete it quickly. Have a safe day in your workshop.